morning, everybody. It's Heidi Kaisen at Hidden Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa. And I need your help because I have choices to make about what wide back or backing fabric I'm going to use on my day flower because I got it done. And I'm going to show you the entire thing in just a minute. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about um, what we're doing, right? Okay, so if you have not been following along, we have been doing a sew along with the book Sunday Best Quilts. And it is a great book and we love, um, absolutely love the projects in here. We're working with Dayflower. And I'm just going to grab off the side here. Uh, we have our original Dayflower, um, which is in these, what I would call... Um, just fresh, bright um, spring fabrics, and they are just absolutely wonderful. They're happy, happy fabrics. And then we couldn't help ourselves when the Marlis collection came in and pulled together all of these beautiful blues and golds um, to use in the Marlis uh, kit. So it makes the same day flower kit, um, but it is absolutely um, just a, a stunning um, set of blue. And um, that is what I have been working with. It's been a team effort. Uh, Jamie got involved at the beginning. Goldie and Virginia have helped along the way. And if you did not see my video yesterday, I did a little mathematical equation and discovered that done sewing this, I have sewn more than the distance of a football field. How is that for math? So more than, it was about 3,900 um, inches and a football field is 100 yards, that's 360 inches. Um, so anyway, kind of fun little fact for you. But it's been a great, great quilt. Um, you can find everything on uh, all the videos that we've been doing um, with Sunday Best Quilts on um, Sunday Best Sew Along. That's four words with a hyphen in between the words. So henandchickstudio.com slash Sunday Best Sew Along. I'll make sure to put the link for that in the copy later. But again, great book. If you're looking for scrappy um, quilts, um, it is just great. Uh, we've shown several. We'll show them again for you. If you are currently following along with this on the day flower um, so long and want to get your quilt uploaded, you have until April 13th to do that to be eligible for awards. Okay, so um, last week I talked a little bit about long arming versus sending it out to a professional quilter and about the conversations that you need to have with yourself as well as being able to have that conversation with a professional if you're going to do that and send it out to them. And so I pulled out four backing fabrics and I'm going to look in the camera here and just make sure that you can appropriately see them. Yes, I think you can at the moment. I'll kind of tip them up. But I've laid out the quilt here and have four choices. And what I'm going to be asking you to do is to help me decide which of the four choices um, we should pick. So I've numbered them one through four. And I'm, we're going we're gonna to click through them real fast. And then I'm going to talk about them and, and the differences. So first we have, I picked a piece that is directly out of the Marlis collection that I still have five and a half yards of that on the bolt. And so that is a 44 slash 45 inch wide fabric. Um, and that is our number one choice. Okay. Not that it, and the numbers have nothing to do with preference. Okay. Just the way they were laying on the table. Number two is a wide back and it is, uh, I think it's called cream. And it's actually kind of a paisley. Let me get up here a little bit closer so that you can see it. Kind of a paisley color. Um, has a little bit of the kind of the yellowish gold look in it. So that is number two. Number three is this, uh, this is a Timeless Treasures uh, spiral, dotty spiral. Blue, kind of two-tone blue. And then um, the fourth one is a... I believe this might be a P and B. Um, it's got a spiral a navy on that. Okay, that's number four. Okay, decisions, right? So when I start looking at these four pieces, uh, lots of different factors for me that go into thinking about what that decision is. 
First of all, I look at my binding, okay? We've ch chosen the Stripe two-tone fabric. Um, this is our binding all prepped and ready to go. Virginia did that for me last night. And how's that gonna look on the back? And does that make a difference to you? So, you know, does it, like that really coordinates well um, with number three, still coordinates well with number four, maybe blends in a little bit more, really sticks out with number two. And of course, um, it is part of the collection from number one, a slightly different shade of blue um, that is in there, but what do we wanna say? There's just some differences in that. Okay, so that's one factor. Minor, I think in the overall scheme of things, for me, the bigger issue is how is it gonna be quilted? And I think it is so important, I believe I touched a little bit on this last week, to understand that most long armors, professional or non-professional like myself, find it best if the color of thread on the top of the quilt matches or is similar to the back of the quilt because you want to hope that every piece of tension on that machine is exact but if you have if i were to put navy thread on the bottom and a cream thread on the top would i be concerned if there was any hint of a little navy dot um, showing up in the hole of my long arm because again just by the nature of using a long arm quilting machine the needle is bigger and it makes a you know bigger insertion, a bigger hole in your quilt, and that can happen. Sometimes it's more obvious than others, depending on the fabrics, um, the thickness of the quilt, all of those kinds of things, but certainly something that you like. Uh, I don't know that I got into this last week or not, but I also have a preference on, I mean, and uh, come on in, Jane, we're doing a little live, so no worries, you stay on that side, or unless you wanna be on the camera, then you can come on this side. You can, you can go ahead and help her. Um, and so um, uh, one of the things you really have to consider is what is that thread gonna look like? So if I'm picking a cream colored thread um, for the top, and I pick a cream colored backing for the back, I'm not gonna see the thread, it's gonna blend in. If I'm going to pick a cream colored thread for the top and say, yep, I still want the cream colored thread on the back, then it's gonna show a lot more on the blues. Is right or wrong? There is absolutely none of these choices that make any difference. It's just an awareness of what the end result will be. So if you say, I want hot pink thread and I want it to show on both the top and the bottom, that's awesome. That's your choice. You can do that. It's just a matter of not being then surprised by what you might get back from a professional quilter. I always feel bad when somebody says, well, I told them just do whatever they want, but then I didn't like that um, when it came back. And that's what you're trying to prevent. You're trying to have those conversations with your professional. So if you say to your professional quilter the next time you take a quilt in, do you like to use the same color thread on the top as you do on the bottom? That is something that then you might want to consider, okay? And so uh, certainly those are all things. So uh, I'm not gonna tell you my preference at the moment. I would like you to vote, uh, again, whether you want one, two, three, or four, um, and which preference. But let me show you the entire quilt right now so that you can see, I bet, I bet Jane would like the reveal as well. And so let me uh, see if I can do it without, I'm gonna try to go this way. Can you grab it there actually, Jane? Just open it up at the bottom and I think that will be fine. What do we Beautiful. think about that? Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. I do think that it is an absolutely beautiful pattern um, uh, as well as an opportunity to use up scraps, um, but just stunning and will be uh, super classic um, for a long time to come. So very pleased about that. And I hope you, um, if you have the chance to make day flower, that you are liking to do that as well. One other thing I just wanted to note, um, because I always think this is important. We have a lot of discussion around here about how our kits look. And, um, you know, what are you getting in a kit? 
And one of the things that really makes a difference to me as a shop owner and as a quilter is that I don't cut that quilt kit so short that I have no room for air or that I have no room for playing around a little bit. And so I grabbed out um, what is left of my kit. Um, literally, I used up all of the light fabrics. I chose to make sure that I used all of those light fabrics because that was the look I wanted. I wanted there to be more contrast. Although I cut off pieces of every dark, I didn't cut off um, as much. I'm going to open it up here. I didn't cut off as much of the half yard as, as I could have of a couple of these pieces. And so that's something that you want to always consider um, when you're making a kit to assess, is there exactly what you need or is there a little bit extra and do I have any room to play? So if I had chosen to make put a few more dark pieces in, I certainly could have, but otherwise, um, everything um, I have left over here, um, can certainly go to making a table runner or anything different. And let me just see if there's, uh, we've got a few people on. I see somebody has already voted for number three. I'm loving it. Um, so be sure to tell us which background fabric. Why don't we click through those again? So number one, I'll pull them up here. Um, number one is from the collection itself, which means I have to piece it. Um, number two is the cream paisley. Three, which I believe Dawn liked, is the spotty di uh, spot the spotty dice. spiral. Let's get okay. that turned around in the blue that has kind of a two-tonal blue. And number four is the dark blue navy wheels. Um, kind of, uh, and those three are all wide backs, so I won't have to do any piecing. We'll just cut one piece and it'll be ready to go with Stephanie to get quilted. So one more time, I'm going to throw this out. I hope you have been enjoying working on the day flower. Can you even help me straighten it out there just a little bit and see if, um, if that is something, a project that you like to do, um, that you would see um, that pattern is in Sunday Best Quilts. So again, if you want to find all of the information, the videos we've been doing about this project, it's at hendenschickstudio.com slash Sunday Best Sew Along. And um, the deadline for entering your quilt will be April 13th. Of course, as always, we love to have you post what you're working on and see the progress you're making on your projects, whether it's Dayflower or anything else, in our creative community. And until the next time, be creative.